After recently making a video on how to make a PS1 style horror game, I thought why not also make a video about how to make a VHS style horror game or like you know a VHS VHS style game or VFH is it or VHS I don't know anyway so yeah in today's video we're gonna be taking a look at how to create a VHS style horror game or you know a scene that looks kind of like that so yep yeah, basically at the end of the video you should have something like this a big inspiration to this video was the puppet combo series games if you have played any of their games you'd instantly recognize this you know like visual style or something like that Another one of the inspirations that came for this video was the Fears to Fathom series, which is also a similar kind of game, but instead focuses on more like a real life story scenario or something like that. But they both have like a similar consistent style to them. They both are trying to be like appealing and they're trying to like make you feel like as if you're watching from someone else's perspective. And the concept really ties everything together when you're, you know, like thinking of something like as it, uh, like as an old creepy VHS tape or something like that. So yep. Okay, first things first, we're going to be needing resources. Download these few packages from the link in the description. They're all GitHub links, so just go ahead and click on the download code option, download everything that you get from it, open up the assets folder and just drag and drop the stuff that you get from the packages from the link in the description. We're going to be using this particular scene as a demo to light up. So yeah, go ahead and download zip, then just, you know, open up the zip file, go inside, use, just get the asset folder from here and open up the asset folders and just drag and drop all the stuff that, you're, that there is. There are two different links. One is for the PSX shader and one is for the post processing effect shaders. Post processing effect shaders is the most important one. That's the one that we're going to be using to like, you know, achieve that VHS, old retro VHS look. And as for the PSX shaders, you can use it if you wanna, but I wouldn't really recommend you using it because that, you know, usually these games don't use these type of shaders, but if you do combine them, like the PSX style and the VHS style together, you might get a unique look, but I'm not gonna be using it for this video in particular because there are a lot of issues with the lighting conditions and, you know, normal lighting and mesh lighting and the vertex shader and other things, which I personally like about the PSX shader, but in this particular scene, I'm not gonna be using it because I'm gonna be using a lot of lighting and you know, dark atmosphere and fog and other stuff. So, yep, let's continue with the standard built-in unit, like Unity's, you know, standard shader. So, yeah. Step one is to get rid of ugly lighting. Go into the lighting section, environment, and from here, select the skybox to the color section. And then just go ahead and select the color and set it up to something, you know, a bit lighter so that you don't get those ugly lighting effects. This is especially helpful when you're, you know, sort of like lighting up an interior scene. So I would recommend you doing this. Go ahead and get yourself a skybox cube map and then just apply it to your scene and then just, you know, color it according to your scene. Lower down the exposure since it's going to be like sort of a night scene. And yeah. Also, if you feel if you feel that the scene doesn't look correct under the lighting conditions, you can change the uh, environment lighting color, which we manually set from skybox to color. You can just set it to something like of a little bit of a darker color or something. Okay, now for the main part. Once you've installed this Unity post processing effect things, you should get something like this. There should be a lot of folders, and from here we're gonna be using a specific view. First one is the RGB shift, or you know, I think this is the one. Yeah, this is the one. Go ahead and drag and drop this script underneath your main camera. And once you have that, you should have this and an empty slot for a material. For the material, go ahead and drag and drop this material, the one that you got from the folder itself. Do not plug any other material into it. And then just set it to active and hit play. Once you play it, you should see something happening. And yeah, well, as you can see, it's happening. It's working, sort of. So this is not something that we want. We want to set the speed to zero, and then we can just adjust the amount. And as you can see, we are already getting that VHS type of look. And we're going to be adding some further effects to enhance or, you know, sort of modify or tweak the visuals to our needs. OK, now we're going to be adding another effect. It's a sort of tone mapping type of effect. It's called the bleach effect. It basically takes away colors from your screen and, you know, makes your scene look a little bit darker. But we're going to be having to remove this because it has an issue with the Unity's lighting, like, you know, point lights and, you know, directional light. Not directional light, actually. Point lights and spotlights. It, it has an error with them. It kind of doesn't render the light lighted areas at all. So we're going to be having to remove this. But don't worry, we can create the similar look using the Unity's, you know, post-processing color grading. So yeah. Okay, let's add the next 
pasteurized effect, or I don't know what it is called, but it's something. This effect basically adds that, you know, PS1 style dithering or color pasteurization effect. Oh wait, it's posterized. Well, anyway, yeah, just, you know, add that effect and, you know, tweak it around. The main thing here is tweaking, just change the values, you know, just wiggle them around. Just find the perfect value that you need. For the next one, for the next effect, we're going to be using the scan lines effect. And it does exactly what it says. It adds the scan lines to your scene. You might not be able to see them properly, but, you know, they are, they are uh, there. They are there. Yeah, they are there. So, you know, change the values. Adjust them. How? I'm not going to be changing the default value because the default one does feel pretty nice to me. But you can see it in action in here. So yeah, you might want to switch the, uh, you know, increase the RGB shift value a little bit more for the, uh, you know, RGB shift to be a little bit more visible. For the next one, we're going to be using the bad TV effect. Now, this is a very interesting effect. This adds these, you know, distortion to the screen. But however, as you can see, the screen not only distorts, but it also, you know, wiggles around a little bit. To fix this, just double click on the shader and it should open up in Visual Studio and just follow along exactly as I do. Once it's open, scroll down to this particular part. From here you should see this variable called roll speed and from here just switch it to zero and you should see that the uh, screen shifting or the screen moving around should be fixed. Now go ahead and save this and hit back into Unity and as you can see we've fixed that. Now you can just go ahead and add, you know, play around with this just the distortion settings and get something that you like. For me personally, I stuck with something like this, but it completely depends on you. So yeah, just play around with the values, as I said. Now, since all the edits were made in play mode, just go ahead and drag and drop the camera while you're on the play mode to create a prefab, and then exit play mode, and then just, you know, you have the prefab over there. So delete the original camera that's in the scene and drag and drop the prefab, and you should get all the settings that you had previously done on the play mode. Make sure to do this or else you will be losing all of the settings you did. So yeah, just make sure you do this before any other thing. Or else you will be losing all those time and effort that you put into creating your perfect looking scene. Now as I said, you can tweak the skybox and the lighting of the scene to make it, you know, sort of like fit the aesthetic that you're going for. Play around with the environment lighting and other things, and the shadow strength, directional light strength. Okay, time to add post-processing. Go ahead and add a new component. You're gonna have you're gonna be needing the post processing package to be installed. Select any layer. For this, I'm gonna be using the UI layer as default. Then select a, then add a post processing volume. Select is global and make a new profile for this. So if you're new to Unity and you don't know how this works, I would recommend you watching up a video. And once you create a new profile, you're gonna be then just adding overwrite and start adding post processing effects. From here, we're gonna be starting with you know a lot of things. I would recommend you going to play mode first because the VHS settings don't exactly show up on you know normal editor view mode. So we'll go into play mode and start adding overrides and you know there are a lot of effects here. The one thing that I'm going to be using is the ambient occlusion. This gives a sort of realism to the scene by adding a lot of ambient occlusion. Also another helpful tip, if you want to you know cut corners and add a cheap and dirty way of adding sort of like you know lit interiors then just go ahead and select the more materials that are you know working in the interior part of your building or you know whatever scene you have select them and just go ahead and change them from normal to being unlit shaders and that will definitely help you you know sort of get a lit inside of a building like you know it's a cheap and dirty way to light up an interior however i would encourage you to add manual lights or area lights and you know mesh related light sources but yeah, you can do that too. But as you can see, in this one, however, if we were to add any light, like a point light or a spotlight, we're getting a weird glitch on the screen. And you might be thinking why this is happening. And this is exactly happening because of the bleach effect that I added. Remember I told you that it has an issue with Unity's built-in light system? So yeah, there is an fix and there might be, I don't know, I'm just not smart enough to do it. But for now, the best fix is to just literally remove the effect from your camera and, you know, use Unity's post-processing post system. Oh my god, I keep messing that up. Use the post-processing system to add a tone mapping instead. Go into the main camera and start adding the post-processing effect color grading. And from here, select ACES, and as you can see, we're already getting that dark tone effect 
fill to our scene and it's gonna further improve when we simply add fog to our scene you can change the saturation I would recommend you like cranking up the saturation and I wouldn't recommend you using the uh, contrast if you're using the posturize effect so yeah and then you can just go ahead and play around with the alpha gamma like the gamma and lift values to change the color I wouldn't really recommend you playing around with any other things and if you wanna then go ahead and do so but here's something that I went with in the end also add a lens distortion effect for that you know lens distortion look on your camera I will I would recommend you doing this because you know the VHS steps were usually played in a CRTL or CTR or, you know those small box TVs so yeah there was a little bit of lens distortion going on so you can just add that to you know replicate that you can also add in some bloom and I'm gonna be showing you why we're gonna be adding bloom as you can see it kind of like eliminates the billboard or the lit up areas and we're gonna be using this to our advantage just in a bit but for now let's just add the bloom effect with a little bit more of lighting tweakings and you know poking around the skybox materials I got something like this with the blue I'm gonna be improving it a little bit just in a bit but for now this is what we're gonna be working with go ahead and add a final effect and it's called the vignette and this is the uh, effect that's gonna put everything together increase the vignette intensity and you know get this type of look and well we're basically almost done for the uh, post-processing part and don't worry the post-processing part the post-processing effects do get saved no matter if you're in play mode or not so yeah don't worry you don't have to worry about that go ahead and enable the fog system though from the lighting panel and as you can see you can already do a lot of stuff with this for now I'm gonna be changing the mode to this thing exponential square or normal exponential whichever that you want to use just choose between those two and not the first one and then just go ahead and change the values to whichever you want and you know something that's gonna save your scene a little bit more than usual and you know go ahead and change the fog colors and stuff so I got something like this in the end I think it looks pretty much very nice and you can also play around with the uh, directional light strength and the shadow settings and let me just show you what you can do to further improve your scene select the billboard and go ahead and turn on the emission from here you can just you know increase the emission and as you can see it already you know sort of emits light from that part and from here now you can just tone down the bloom intensity accordingly so you know it gets off that you know sort of blurry type of vibe from a store light you can also do the same thing for you know uh, sort of like hanging lights and stuff just go ahead and select the material and you know change their and you know emission type and just add emission and just increase the light source you know emission a little bit and you should have these sort of like you know lights going on this thing. and with some unlit materials added to the surface the walls and the floors it should look pretty convincing overall during the very end you can play around with some other color grading values change them you know move them accordingly and get sort of effect that you want play with the lift gamma grain values the shadows and tone map the hue saturations and other things to get that look that you're going for so in the end this is what I came up with by tweaking the settings a little bit you can play around with the values more like I said more than 100 times probably but I just keep saying it because I don't know what else to say you can just you know move it around change things and it's all optional and stuff and I'm yeah that's pretty much the very base of how you can make your scene look like it's some old retro VHS tape or something like that so hope you enjoyed the tutorial and hope it was helpful so if it if it was helpful then go ahead and check out my channel you also there's my patreon link in the description the entire scene will be available there for you to download and check out all the assets that were used in this video will be linked in the description and you can just go ahead and download from there and of course there are they are all are free so you can just down, download them and forward them in your package do whatever uh, or you can just go ahead, go ahead to my patreon and you know literally download the entire scene and use that so yeah that's pretty much it thanks for watching leave a like leave a comment or criticize me for how stupid I am but Anyway, peace out. Okay, time for some extra tips. Go ahead and select your models. Whichever model that you want and just go ahead and, you know, manually sort of like shift their colors and their darker tones if you think that they're not fitting well, like fitting in well with the, you know, environment and stuff. A good example would be the roads and grasses, which might not, like, fit in with their color scheme, so you might want to change them into, an, like, you know, a little bit of darker color. You can also add some volumetric lights. Go into the link in the description and download this volumetric light package. Go ahead and open it up and, you know, 
sort of like drag and drop all the files that you see and then select your target object that you want to add a light source and go ahead and add a light source to it before that go into the camera and add this volumetric light renderer component and set the resolution to full then select your target object add in a light you can add in like spotlights or you know sort of like you know point lights i would go for spotlights and then just select and add it for this example i'm going to be adding this on a lamp post then you know set up your light as usual you know uh, increase the range uh, apply some intensity so that it's a little bit visible and once everything is set go ahead and select the light and add a volumetric light not the renderer one just the light and once you do that you will not see any immediate changes go ahead into the game view and start like you know play the game and you should see the volumetric lights it will not render in the scene view only will be rendering in the game view so yeah that's pretty much how you add volumetric lights you can use this technique and add various different type of techniques like you know lights and stuff you can also add in a spotlight in the middle of the you know store like a point light or something then add the volumetric light script to that and to you know sort of use it as a sort of like a fog or a flourish type of thing there are a lot of options there so go ahead and play with them and you know, you know just see what they are there are noise options scattering options a lot of things just play with them i will be not going through like a detailed list of them so you know we can play see what you get